you've descended into the Bottom Dwellers Dive Shack, a commercial diving podcast by working divers for divers. This is LB Diver with the Bottom Dwellers Dive Shack. As many of you may know, Hurricane Ida made landfall on Sunday, August 29th at Port Fouchon as a strong Category 4 storm on the 16-year anniversary of Hurricane Katrina. Just to put things in perspective, Hurricane Katrina was a Category 3 hurricane with sustained winds of 125 miles per hour. Ida was a storm that intensified rapidly with sustained winds of 150 miles per hour and recorded gusts up to 172 miles per hour. Port Fouchon has sustained uh, severe catastrophic damages. Um, the roads are flooded, uh, buildings are uh, destroyed. So in order for a lot of this work to get done, Port Fouchon being the main artery for oil and gas has to be rebuilt and repaired. A lot of these uh, companies that have uh, oil platforms and oil rigs, they base out of Fushan, they fly out of Fushan, and uh, the crew boats leave Port Fushan. Um, it's a huge blow. This hurricane went straight through the heart, right down the vein of the uh, oil and gas business. So I know there have been initial reports in the media were that it wasn't that bad, but we are now getting confirmed reports of uh, oil slicks in the water. So there was a mile long oil slick that was observed um, south of uh, Port Fushan. And there's also the uh, oil fuels, you know, rainbow sheen that uh, has been spotted in those waters as well. Also that being said, I have been speaking to uh, several dive companies um, that, that are based out of the uh, south. And uh, they have all been telling me the same thing. I spoke with a specialty with a, Aqueous with a Phoenix and, and uh, several others. And they're all saying the same thing. Um, their clients are telling them that it's bad. So the oil and gas clients are, uh, are saying that this, this one's pretty bad. So um, with that being said, there have been companies that are already offering sign on bonuses. I believe specialty offshore is one of those um, Aqueous also they're hiring and uh, they're accepting resumes in uh, anticipation of, uh, of work from this. I was able to speak with Travis Detke. He's the uh, vice president of uh, Aqueous, um, the vice president of operations at Aqueous. He said he's been in the diving business for 44 years, so he's seen a thing or two. Um, he told me that hurricanes uh, like this can either disrupt oil production or they can tear the Gulf apart. Uh, many are feeling like this one is, is closer to the latter. Um, he also told me that during Katrina and during Rita, um, that demand was more than the supply which what he meant by that was, uh, was resources, personnel, equipment. Uh, they just weren't able to uh, meet the demand. All these oil companies were calling at the same time. So you had all these work orders that a lot of the American companies couldn't cover. So a lot of foreign companies had to be used to uh, get some of this work done. Companies from like the West Coast or the East Coast that aren't usually in the oil and gas offshore business, they were all you know, coming to, uh, to pick up the extra work. So he was also telling me that the Coast Guard allowed foreign uh, nationals on, uh, on Coast Guard vessels, which uh, usually, you, you know, you never do that. But because of the severity of the situation, um, they were allowing that. Um, he also he was telling me that anyone that can put a three-man team together was pretty much getting work. Uh, companies at that time during uh, Katrina, they uh, kept their divers on the payroll. They kept them on the payroll through the holidays just so that way they had that supply and pool of divers and didn't have to go, go hunting for them. So, um, but again, from what we've been hearing, you know, this, this storm is, is going to be particularly bad. And like I mentioned earlier, there's already a, a company that I know of, especially offshore, that's offering uh, sign-on bonuses already. So uh, more companies are, are more than likely going to follow with that again. So the majority of the work during Katrina was, uh, was from uh, toppled platforms. So that was a tremendous amount of uh, work doing that. And it was also a tremendous amount of dangerous work. So he was also telling me that um, also a lot of the pipeline crossings and tie-ins tie that uh, there was a lot of survey work. Now, given that's not necessarily dive work, but it's uh, for Marine contractors, there was a lot of uh, survey work. So um, a lot of these, uh, again, 
all these platforms have to be uh, they have to conduct inspections before uh, before commencing production. So it was really good to talk with uh, Travis a little bit about uh, about this and what went on during Katrina. He also uh, wanted me to relay uh, to the divers that you know, hey, you might have to prepare your family um, for some of this work. Uh, you might not be seeing them for quite a while, so make sure that your affairs are in order and 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 they're all prepared to be away from home for an extended period of time. Um, also, be aware of the risks of working around down platforms. Um, the entanglement risks, the, the, uh, the diving trade is a, is not a dangerous trade, but it is a high risk trade. So there's, there's a difference there. Um, so there's, you know, be careful around the pollution and everything as well. So he, uh, he also said that, um, the younger guys, make sure you guys take it slow, be alert and always look for a path out of harm's way. Um, he also mentioned that after Katrina, there was a tremendous amount of divers uh, being bent. So uh, again, you know, we all have to look out for each other and uh, take care of each other. So again, um, he shared some insight with us on uh, how short supply of the equipment and, uh, you know, barges, boats, and crews, crews were at that time. So um, hopefully we're a little bit more prepared, but um, with the state of uh, Fushan and, uh, and Homa, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's not looking so good. So, I also uh, was able to arrange for us to speak with uh, with uh, Mr. Bobby Delise as well, and um, he's out of harm's way, uh, but his offices are based in New Orleans, so it was uh, great of him to be able to take some time time out and, and uh, talk with us and, and see how uh, how this might play out. All right, this is LB Diver with the Bottom Dwellers Dive Shack, and I'm uh, really grateful that we're able to uh, have uh, Bobby Delise back on. Um, we've been talking about Hurricane Ida, and I felt that we needed to get his insight on uh, kind of some of the stuff to look out for for the protection of the diver. Um, Bobby, we talked briefly uh, about, uh, you know, some of the stuff that happened during Katrina. Is it fair to uh, compare this to that? Well, it's always... Um not good to compare one to another, but if one would compare with Katrina, um, you know, it's pretty darn close. Um, but first of all, I, I want to thank you for, you know, giving us this opportunity to chat. Um, and, um, we, you know, just, we can go from there. And I, the, the other thing I ask is that anybody who's watching this um, to please, you know, keep us in your prayers because there's a lot of, uh, really challenging things going on, um, you know, in our part of the world. Yeah, I know you, uh, you, you didn't stay, right? You guys evacuated? Yeah, we didn't, but I'm going back to New Orleans tomorrow, and I'll be working remotely probably um, on Friday um, out of New Orleans. Um, but, yeah, that's what we're, so we're doing okay. All right. Well, that's good to hear. I, I, I know uh, definitely I reached out to you, you know, when, when all this stuff started going down because uh, we're definitely concerned, you know, with all our friends and associates uh, in those areas. And uh, first of all, again, we want to wish them, you know, speedy, speedy recovery from all this. And uh, our hearts are with you guys that uh, went you. through this, that lost property or don't even really know yet just because it's so fresh, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. If I could, let me, um, let me kind of give you a, a couple of my um, thoughts and and where we are and where we're going to go is that okay yeah that's that's great thanks all right uh yes you referenced katrina um and uh i'm already seeing a lot of things um that happened post katrina happening now first of all for those who don't know um the eye of the storm basically went over port fushan which is the the staging area for 90% of all the, you know, commercial, uh, all, all the maritime work in the Gulf of Mexico. That's where the, the, the boats go out. That's where the helicopters go out. That's where, um, you know, that's like the way station to get out. So um, the other thing that I, I think our listeners need to know is that we don't know yet how bad the Gulf of Mexico was torn up. Um, believe it or not, at Port Fouchon, they registered um, winds of 170 to 180 miles an hour. Um, so we don't know yet how bad things are in the Gulf of Mexico, but um, 
<clears throat> from first reports, uh, it's pretty bad. <clears throat> and by, you know, what is bad? What is bad is that the platforms are going to have problems. We're going to have some very serious, prob probably, uh, pollution issues. Um, and we're going to have a lot of the um, vessels that would service the Gulf of Mexico. Um, you know, we, we don't know where they are or how bad they're in. Um, now, for the diving community, there's good news and bad news, okay? The good news is that um, anybody who can choke a hose and anybody who can put on a hat is going to be busy for the next God knows how long. That's the good news. Um, because after Katrina, you know, everybody who could dive was diving. And that's the good news. Here's the bad news and the things that I really wanted to reflect on. Um, with all this ton of work, you're going to get two issues that we saw post Katrina. And unfortunately, I represented three families who lost their loved ones, loved ones in, in fatalities post Katrina. Um, and it's a supply and demand situation, Amanda. And what I mean by that is, is that there is going to be a great, great supply, uh, I mean, excuse me, demand of divers, supervisors, tenders, um, med techs, DMTs, et cetera, et cetera. With that, um, what we saw post Katrina, and I've already seen it happening already, is that you're getting call outs and people are responding. And what we saw post Katrina is you're gonna get two things happening. Number one, you're gonna get, in, you're gonna get diving contractors who believe they can do a certain operation and they, they can't. They don't have the experience, they don't have the expertise, they don't have the manpower, they don't have the equipment. Second thing is, is that we're going to see a lot of people who think they know what they're doing and telling the companies they know what they're doing, and they don't. Um, believe it or not, post Katrina, we had we had a situation where there was a supervisor who didn't speak English. He spoke spoke Russian, and there was a diver on bottom, and he couldn't communicate with the diver. The other thing is that, that we were seeing post Katrina um, that you know going down to you know um, where where the boat leaves, they were picking up pitch hikers and say, oh, by the way. God bless you, you're now a tender. So you get the guy who's, you know, holding the hose who has no idea what they're doing. They don't know what the hand signals are. They don't know, you know, if they tell, if they tell a tender, you know, go check on the compressor. They look at him and go, what do you mean? I'll, I'll go tell, you know. So, you know, that's the other problem. The other issue that we saw, and we hope we don't see it now, is that, um, you have to remember, everybody has been affected. And what I mean by that is, in addition to dive crews, Armando, you're going to have diving doctors who are nowhere to be found. And if a, if a guy gets hurt, who does the company call? They can't find, they can't find the DMO. They can't find, you know, um, a, ho a hospital that has uh, capacity to treat divers, um, and, and, and that's another problem that we saw. And I know firsthand a couple of my buddies who are hyperbaric doctors are gone. And the hospitals that they serve are over, um, overwhelmed because of COVID and now because of the storm. So, um, you know, that's, that's where we are. So we're going to have equipment shortage, expertise shortage, and manpower shortage. So that's where we are. So with these shortages, um, the other thing that I kind of wanted to touch on and ask you, correct me if I'm wrong, but usually during emergency work, um, it, it's kind of classified a little differently to where the normal vetting process is kind of shortened for, for some of this work as far as uh, vetting a contractor and their personnel. Is that correct? Yes. Yes. And, you know, what happens is, is that if you have a, if you have a, 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 a platform or a structure down and it's leaking fuel or hydrocarbons or anything, you know, there are needed shortcuts for obvious reasons. Um, you know, um, so 
Yes. So we're going to be seeing a lot of hurry up and go as soon as they get the word. And it's going to be a mad scramble. And uh, some of these crews are going to be staffed by, uh, you know, people that you might not know as the diver. Um, for those that are with companies where, you, you know, you are working with people that you know, I, I guess stick with those guys, you know, and don't take yes. a chance. Um, so that's, that's kind of a, that's not very comforting to hear about the, uh, about the hitchhikers and stuff like that. But, you know, hopefully that doesn't happen again. What can we do to protect ourselves? Um, you know, here's Bobby's recommendations. Okay. And please, um, if you've got more, let me know. But these are, you know, I've got, I've got a list of um, five things to um, that post Katrina, you know, we learned that we don't want to see happened again. Number one, um, the JSA right now is the most important tool in your tool bag. I'll say it again. The JSA is the most important tool in, in your, in your tool bag. Um, they've got to be worked. They can't be boilerplate plate, um, JSAs. Um, you have to sit down and, 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 and the team have to really go, okay, everybody stop. You know, we know what the J, you know, step one, what's the job? Number two, what is the safety you know, problems? Number three, how do we mediate them? Number four, who's going to do what to mediate them? And number five, if things change, we have to change the JSA. That's as, number one. As far as the JSA, does uh, the diver have a right to request a copy of that for their records? Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, number two, um, next to a JSA, the second best um, tool in our two gear is stop work authority you know, stop work. I don't care how much they pay you. I don't care what, you know, what, what, um, what you're promised. Hey, you know, we get a lot of gas work. Hey, we'll put you in sat, this, that, and the other. If somebody sees something that is, um, is hazardous or unsafe, do a stop work authority. Believe me, if they kick you off the boat, there's another company that's going to take you. That's one of the good things about where we are with respect to supply demand. Um, number three, uh, get rest. Get rest. I mean, it's freaking 100 degrees in the Gulf right now. Hydrate, hydrate, hydrate. Get re rest. If the company says, I don't care what your effing surface interval is, you're getting back in the water, you don't do it. If you've got a 12-hour surface interval or, or if you don't have a 12-hour surface interval, you know, get rest. Do it. Also, um, we saw this, and I'm, I hope we don't see it again. We got a lot of companies that want to do back to back to back to back dives where, you know, Diver Dan is asked to dive on a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday with a 11 hour and 59 minute, excuse me, a, 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 a 23 hour and 59 minute surface interval. Don't do it. You will get bent. You will get tired. You will do stupid shit in the water. You have to get your rest. Um, and, and, and the fourth, the fourth recommendation, and uh, this is very, very important. Everybody take care of each other. You know, if you got a four man dive team and they want you to do, you know, repat, 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 and, and, and diver Dan says, I'm not doing it, but diver Charlie says, I'll do it. You know, you're not taking care of your buddy and you're not taking care of yourself. Okay, they're going to be asking people to do stuff we shouldn't do. Don't do it. And I'll say it again. If they fire your butt, believe me, believe me, if you're a good diver, the supply of divers is down, the demand is up, you'll go somewhere else to work. Okay. And if the divers and, stick and, together, they're not going to fire the whole crew. Exactly. They shouldn't. No, and if they do, just keep in mind this, um, and believe me, um, I'm going to give you my cell phone number. If you're seeing stuff or hearing stuff that's against Coast Guard regs, OSHA regs, you know, um, ADCI regs, give me a call. It, you cannot be disciplined offshore for reporting a Coast Guard violation to the Coast Guard. I'll say it again. Legally, you cannot be reprimanded for reporting a Coast Guard violation to the Coast Guard. 
So again, if you see something going on and you report it to the Coast Guard and they say you're fired, you have a legal cause of action. You see something or hear something, you call me and I'll get the Coast Guard on the phone. Uh, I just had a meeting with the Coast Guard um, two weeks ago and, and I know who runs the shop down in New Orleans and in the different sectors in the Gulf of Mexico. If I hear something's happening, I pick up the phone, I call, the, I, I call that individual and then excrement will hit the fan when that happens. So call me at diver, 1-800-DIVER-55. That's 1-800-DIVER-55. My cell phone, it goes straight to my cell phone. If you want my cell phone number, it's 504-460-6200. That's 504-460-6200. I really hope we don't see what we saw post-Katrina, but I'm already seeing a couple of things where they're saying, look, come work for us and we'll pay you $500 standby pay until we get the work. Yeah, I've been hearing hearing that too. And uh, next thing you know, we'll probably be getting some sign-on bonuses offered and, you know, yep. who knows. Don't let the money, and, uh, and, you know, tempt you too much. And the other thing with respect to that, and, and that's a great observation with the sign-on bonuses, you know, if, if a diving contractor calls you and says, look, we'll give you this, 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 and this, have them email it to you. You know, we will pay you a $5,000 signing bonus. You get X number of dollars depth pay. You, you know, you get, you know, X number of dollar day rate, X number of dollars per hour. Have them put it in a email. Okay, because that's the only way you can document it. Because again, we saw that post Katrina, not with the big companies, not with the ocean earrings, not with, you know, the big companies, but with the mon pop mud hole companies, They'll, they'll offer you the world, and when it comes time to pay you, they don't. They don't, and, and that's problematic. You know, divers are strange breeds. They're the bravest workers I know. Uh, they think they can run through a brick wall. They think that they can, you know, they can, they can do a 10-foot rapid ascent. Nothing's going to happen. They think they can do, you know, six-hour surface intervals. You know, I've never been bent, blah, blah. Well, you know, physics are physics. Physics is physics. And, and um, just, and, and this is kind of what I think we call a redundant statement. You have to be, divers have to be humble right now. And they have to be fearful of, of what's out there. You know, case in point, if, if, if you're going to do burning, on a structure in 200 feet of water, that is a spider's web. Zero visibility, currents, everything we know of, and and um, you know it is it, it, it is a very hostile environment, and you must respect that environment. And we want to know what's going on too. I mean, if you guys have any questions about some of the work that you're performing, if you have any questions about um, safety, feel free to reach out to us or reach out to Bobby. Um, I've got a lot of resources in my back pocket as well. I know quite a bit of divers, you know, that, that are, that are old and, and uh, new. And, you know, we have a wealth of information that this podcast is sharing with everybody and we're going to continue that. So like I said, um, don't, don't stay quiet. You know, this is going to be a, 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 this is going to be like the Super Bowl for divers. All right. Exactly. But, but don't, you know, get hurt, you know, getting that money. Um, right. At the end of the day, it's just money. Um, but I'm just and, saying and, and, we're here. And what, you, and what you just said, Armando, it hits the nail on the head. This is a Super Bowl. Okay. And, you know, the consequences about playing in the Super Bowl, if you win, you get 150 grand or whatever. If you lose, you get 75 grand. In this Super Bowl – if you win, you can etch your st- name in the records to where you'll work all the time. If you lose, your wife or significant other is going to have to call Bobby and say, I lost Christopher, I lost Tony, I lost Daniel, I lost Matthew, and these are names of divers who lost their lives, and, and you, I don't want that phone call. Um, and, and again, I'll, let me go over this again, if you don't mind. Number one, the JSA 
extraordinarily important. Stop work authority, get rest, and take care of each other. Okay? Um, they cannot, and by they, I'm talking about diving contractors and their customers. They cannot work without our guys. And they need us. So you have the leverage to be protected. And as always, you have any questions, you know where to find us. Yeah, and, and this is a time more than ever that we're going to have to stick together as a community. You know, stick close to your crew. Don't be that a-hole, you know, that, that stays isolated and kind of is the, you know, the rat for everybody. You, you know, be a team player. Get the stuff done. There's plenty of work for everybody. There's going to be plenty right. of work for everybody. It was already busy starting, you know, to ramp up a little bit before this. Um, I've, I've just gotten off of the phone with several dive companies this morning, and uh, they've all been telling me the same thing. They said they've been talking to their clients, they've been in conference calls, and the oil company, the, the, the uh, clients, they're all saying it's bad. So when they're yeah. saying it's bad, it's probably worse. So uh, they're, you know, a lot of these companies are going to be staffing up and hiring. Make sure you guys get your resumes together, get your dive physicals done, get all your certs paid up and up to date, and uh, be ready for that call because it's coming. You know, it's coming next week or maybe even tomorrow. Who knows? Right now we're still in the assessment phase. And uh, yeah, like I said, just protect yourselves, guys. And we're going to keep doing these little updates. And uh, and thank you, Bobby, for uh, coming on. Do you have anything else that you kind of want to uh, say? No, but you, you, you hit a very good point there, Armando. And it's something, again, that, that cannot be overemphasized. You have to be physically fit to die. And if your ADCI phys yearly physical is not up to date, they're probably not going to care, but you know, you know, if you've had something that's happened and you know, you shouldn't, you know, if you shouldn't be diving, don't. That's but, true too. That's yeah, another point. The, we might get some divers that are coming back into the trade that have been out of the trade for uh, quite a while. I didn't even think and about that, Bobby. And there is no way that the, do the doctors who are doing the physicals are going to be able to do it. The only, the only, um, um, the only doctor that I know who is open for business is Dr. Sirio in Lafayette, New Iberia, because believe it or not, all of the power, I'll say it again, all of the power in Orleans, Paris, Jefferson, Paris, Terrebonne, Lafouche, St. Bernard, you know, all of that power is out. And we're looking at weeks, if not months, before the power comes up. So if you're getting your diving physical, you know, in Harvey, you ain't going to do it for a while. Um, you know, Dr. Sirio's probably, I haven't talked to him yet, but Dr. Sirio in, in, in Lafayette is probably going to be open for business. Um, and that's offshore. Um, I don't want to give the wrong, but Dr. Joseph Sirio, um, you know, everybody, everybody knows Dr. Joe but he's probably going to be open. Okay. But yeah. please, please don't, don't go offshore. Don't dive if you know you're not medically fit. That's a good point because you're going to put yourself in danger and also your crew because they're going to have to go get you. Yep. Okay. Um, yeah, so like I said, this is a developing story. You know, we're still in the early stage of this thing, uh, but companies are starting to mobilize, you know, right now as, as they should. And uh the uh, storm surges were bad, and I, I mean, I was getting reports uh, called Specialty Offshore, and he was saying that their clients were watching these 50-foot waves just crash over the rig. I, I mean, this, it sounds like it was nuts out there. Right. And my concern is that I don't know where the DSVs were, um, but again, where they usually hole up, you know, maybe intercoastal, um, maybe Yountville, um, hopefully the good, the DSVs were sent west, but, you know, Lake Charles is still reeling from last year. Um, and, and, and the other problem with, and again, you don't compare the storms, but the other problem with this storm is she exploded and we had no time, you know, we had no time to, you know, prepare. It's not like, you know, the storm developed off the coast of Florida, off the coast. You know, this thing developed 
south of Cuba, and in two days, it exploded. So, you know, that, that's where we are. All right. Well, I but we'll make thank it. You. I definitely want to thank you for coming on, sharing uh, some of this information. We're going to be having more information later in the future um, as we get some, you know, some, some more, uh, more information about the story. I just said information like three, four times. But uh, that, that's kind of what we're waiting for. You know, we're waiting for news. Everyone's on pins and needles right now, you know, waiting to get called yeah. into the game, you know, and uh, yeah, just make and, sure and, you're and ready for- to go. And don't forget, you know, everything you see on the internet is true. You know that, don't you? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You I know, have to verify they, a couple stories myself. Yeah, they're, they're, I, I, I haven't because I've been too darn busy since Sunday, you know, that the Mars system broke free. And then somebody said it didn't. Then somebody said it did. And I don't know. But, you know, so, you know, don't believe everything you see on the internet. Yeah, I think the official company news was that it was still there after a chopper flyover yep. recently. So, yep. but uh, yeah, so like I said, I think uh, I think we're gonna get our, our our guys ready. Our guys will be ready to go. They're up for the challenge, and uh, absolutely, everybody's excited to to get Louisiana back uh, back together again. So, uh, anything uh, anything we can do, uh, let us know. Um, you know, if I have to take a truckload of waters down there or something, let me know, Bobby. <laughs> well, you know, the other thing I saw, and 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 you know, this is true, but I'm. I'm going to change the words, but you know, there's been a, there's been a meme going around is now, now the, I gotta be careful. Now the world is going to see what Americans do. Nice. Get out of our way. And I'm not going to, I don't want to start crying, but get out of our way, give us a job and watch what happens. And that's what's going to happen, especially with our much rock and roll. Let's go. All right, Bobby. Well, I wish your family the best, and I hope uh, the damages aren't too bad when you go back and check everything out. And if they are, you know, you'll you'll rebuild just like, you know, like you've done before. So, again, uh, stay strong, buddy. Stay strong and uh, get through this. All right, man. Take care, brother. Good talking with you. Bye. So, in conclusion... I'm really grateful that we were able to speak with uh, Travis Detke of Aqueous and uh, that we were able to speak with, uh, with Bobby Delise as well uh, to share some insight on uh, some of the stuff that we, we might be expecting in the near future. Now, given we're not sure of the extent of damages, um, but from all the uh, signs and everything that we've been seeing, it, it's going to be pretty extensive. Um, is it going to be as much work as, as uh, Hurricane Katrina? Hurricane Katrina? Uh, that we don't know. We're still in, in the, uh, you know, opening stages of this. But uh, again, primary concern is is our is uh, is the people of Southern Louisiana, which includes many of our uh, diving brothers and sisters and uh, those dive companies that are down there that just got hammered through this uh, hurricane. We really hope that they uh, they make it out all right and they make it through this, and uh, that they're able to uh, start the repair and recovery on their personal property first, and then then start thinking about the uh, you know about the nation's inf- uh, oil and gas infrastructure. But other than that, just make sure you guys all have your uh, have your ducks in a row as far as your, your paperwork, your certs and everything. Uh, there's companies that are going to be hiring. Aqu- uh, Aqueous, they told me that they're currently uh, actively hiring right now. Uh, specialties hiring right now. They're offering sign-on bonuses, and they're not going to be the, the, the last one to be doing that. So um, just keep your uh, ears open. Um, keep your eyes open. And uh, look out for each other. We're going to do our best to keep you guys uh, briefed about what's going on. And uh, also, uh, we'll keep having these guests on that can share some uh, insight on the last go around. So that way, maybe we won't have uh, the same diving accidents or the same, uh, you know, same kind of incidents that we had the uh, last go around with a hurricane of this caliber. Other than that, you guys out there stay safe and uh, keep listening to the Bottom Dwellers Dive Shack. Follow us on our Instagram uh, at Bottom Dwellers DS. Go to our website, thebottomdwellers.com. Um, you can go to our Facebook page under Bottom Dwellers Dive Shack. And uh, if you have any questions or concerns or comments, please uh, email me at bddiveshack at gmail.com. My name is uh, Armando. You know, my screen name is LB Diver, but uh, you can just give, give me a call, you know, uh, through text message. Um, 
just me, uh, send me a direct message either on uh, Facebook or Instagram and I'll give you my number. All right. Uh, other than that, we'll see you on the next update or the next episode.